What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about FSELX. This is Fidelity Select Semiconductors Portfolio, which you can see right on the top here. Let's go over the summary, and then I wanna jump into the prospectus up here because this gives us a lot of good information. So scrolling down, Fidelity offers a nice strategy right here. So if you buy this fund, you're gonna be invest primarily in companies that design, manufacture, and basically sell electronic components. So semiconductors, any connectors, any circuit boards, anything electronic in that aspect. Now this fund will normally invest 80% of its assets in companies that are primarily engaged in what we just talked about. Anything with designing manufacturers, designs, and selling semiconductor equipment. Now let's get into it. Let's look at what it specifically is investing in because I want to do a deep dive into this. So let's start off with the basics. On the summary, we can see that this is Morningstar category. It's listed as technology and the expense ratio is 0.69%. Now under the prospectus, it's much easier to see what the fees actually add up to. So I'm gonna break that down for you with a hypothetical growth of $10,000. So now we know it's trading at, it looks like $24.07. We'll, we'll break it down at the chart and see where it's at. Turnover rate is 50% and portfolio assets is over 10 million. So let's look at the top 10 holdings real quick. Big red flag on this right away is NVIDIA is worth 25, almost 26% of this fund. You might as well just buy NVIDIA at this point. Now I'm not saying this is a bad fund, but let's say something bad happens to NVIDIA and you had $100 and NVIDIA goes out of business this fund is going to get destroyed. So it's very heavily weighed on NVIDIA. I mean, there's only 42 holdings in this whole portfolio, and one of them makes up 26%. So let's go through the others. This one has a dash in it. So I'm assuming NXP Semiconductors, which was 9%, is either no longer in it, or it's not a top holding. I'm not sure. Then you have ON, which is 7.47%. Then you have Marvel Technology, 7%. Taiwan, uh, semiconductors, which I like, TSM is 5%, seems a little low. And then you have Broadcom, AVGO, which is 4.74%, and the list goes on. All right. Anytime, anytime that I am going to buy a fund, I look at the prospectus, right? This is super important. We need to look at what are the fees. So let's scroll down right here, and you can see shareholder fees. So there's no shareholder fees that are directly from your investments. If you had $10,000, no fees paid directly from your investment. But there are annual operating expenses. So the management fee is a loan, 0.53%. And then there's another option where it says other expenses, 0.16%. This total annual operating expenses is 0.69%. That's a lot in my eyes. That's a lot. But let's go over it. If you were to invest $10,000, so look, for every $10,000 you invest, you're going to pay in the first year, you're going to pay $70. If you held this for three years, you're going to pay $221. If you held it for five years, $384. If you held it for 10 years, $859. Now, it depends where you're buying this, where it's say, oh, okay, it's worth it paying $859 if I'm up 100%, but you don't know what you're going to be at. Look at the portfolio turnover. This means that the fund is paying for transaction costs, commissions, anytime it buys and sells. Basically, a higher portfolio turnover rate indicates that higher transaction costs and it results in higher taxes. Now, it just depends. Do you have this fund in your taxable account? Then you have to think about this. But if you don't and you just hold it in your retirement account, then this doesn't even apply to you. But let's look at the performance of this fund. Going to performance, you can see that this is a very volatile fund. So look at 2013 all the way to 2022. 2013, it was up almost 40%, 39%, up 38% in 2014, a flat year in 2015, 2%. It's been doing great, 32%, 35%. But what is this telling you? 25% of the fund is in NVIDIA, 5% in Taiwan. So that's like 32% is based on those two companies alone. And you can see when we have bad years, like 2022, negative 35% downturn. 
So definitely some risk with this. With this, you have to have a strong stomach if you're gonna be, you know, buying this. But it's done consistently really well, and now it's at all-time highs. I think this is important to see. So you can see under semiconductors portfolio, you have a return before taxes, and then a return after taxes on distributions. So you can see that the before taxes in the past year, which is 2022, we were down 35%. But over the past five years, up 16%, and the past 10 years, making 22%. So that's not bad, but that's pre-tax. Now you got to look at the return after taxes. You can see that your, that 22% before is now 198 19.48%. So it's definitely something to consider when you're trying to do the average annual returns, which is important. So I think it's always good to look at the average annual total returns, especially if you're considering this for a long-term investment. I think it's good to look at a bar graph. So I brought this up on Fidelity. As you can see, Fidelity had a, I mean, this, this fund, FSELX, had a monster year. It's in purple. All the purples are FSELX. They've crushed the S&P 500. I mean, look at this. 42% in one year. That's incredible. Versus the S&P 500, that was 134 but it gets thicker the longer you go out. So look at three-year performance. You can see, just looking at the bar graph, that semiconductors is obviously performing the best, but even the MSI, IMI semiconductors basically did the same, the yellow one. But if we go through the life of it, you're looking at a, an average 14% return. So semiconductors right now is hot. It's what's in. It's, it's beating the S&P 500 long-term over the life of it. It's got 14% returns over the lifetime, whereas S&P 500 is 11%. Both of those are excellent returns, and if you can get either one of those long-term, that's excellent, and that's definitely a good investment. But I just wanted you to see the bar graph because I think it gives you a good idea in the last 10 years where semiconductors has been. 10 years, 25% investment, lifetime 14%. So you definitely get some ups and downs, but definitely something to look into. You can see here, looking at Morningstar, I mean, this thing is very highly rated. I mean, it's five stars out of 229 funds, 10 years, it's five star rating. And if you go over here on the Lipper Peer Group, you can see that ranked number 17 last year out of 185 funds. And last five years, it's number one. The last 10 years, number one. So it definitely has a lot of popularity and people like this index ETF. So let's break it down. How does this index, you know, break down compared to everything else? So semiconductors, 85%. Remember, the goal was 80% is in semiconductors. Semiconductor materials and equipment is 12%, and the rest is pretty negligible. You can see that this is invested in large growth. So that's nice. You're trying to get growth, and these invest in companies that are greater than $10 billion in assets. So domestic, United States, 87%. International is 11%. But if you look, developed markets are 5.55%, whereas emerging markets are 5.48%. Just to go to the regional diversification, you can see United States is 87%. And then basically what we just said above. You have some in Europe, some in Asia, and cash is in 1%. And when you look at the country diversification, when you're buying these semiconductors, you can see that United States is the primary holder. And then you have Taiwan, which is that TSM. Right here, you can see it on top, TSM, that's that 5.3848% right there, and then some in the Netherlands. So you're getting a little bit of uh, international exposure, which is good, but mostly everything's in the United States. So regarding FSELX, we went over it. It's $6.90 every $1,000 you have invested. We went over the breakdown earlier in the video. I like that you can see the dividend history. We can see that it pays a dividend once a year. So it looks like in December, December 18th, December 17th, December 16th, December 21st, you can see it pays a small divvy of like two cents per share. Not that much. So you're not relying on this for dividends. This is more growth. So that's what, not, that's what you're going to get out of it. And you get capital gains on it as well. For, and it looks like it pays, it looks like 2022, it paid twice, uh, semi-annual. 2023, yep, so it pays twice a year in capital gains, which is nice. Then you have your minimum investment, which is $0. So that's nice if you're looking to just get started. You don't have to worry about having you know $2,000 to get in. So I do appreciate that about the fund. What I appreciate about Fidelity is they offer these key takeaways when you look up index funds. And you can see this is by the fund manager, Adam Benjamin. 
And he is talking about how the fund has gained 32%, you know, and it's trailing 38% compared to the MSCI US semiconductors. So this is definitely something else to look into is this fund because it's getting greater gains compared to FSCLX. But it's showing you that over the past six months, semiconductors was the best performing industry group. So it's a question you want to ask yourself. Do you really want to be buying it if it's the best performing you know, for all these years and it's at the all-time highs right now? That's a question you got to ask yourself. And basically the trend of why it's been outperforming is due to OpenAI's chat GPT. So because you have this artificial intelligence, AI is blowing it up and people are buying like crazy. I mean, that's up to you. You let me know in the comments section below if you think, you know, you should be buying this with the AI craze going on. And it says that Adam remains quite bullish on the prospects of semiconductor related investments. And of course, I mean, if you're if the index is going up like, you know, 20, 30, 40 percent every year, of course, you're going to be have this nice bullish outlook on it. So just one more time, we can look at the historical fund performance and we can see that 2023 was a monster year. FSELX, 61%. 2022, 35% loss. 2021, 60% gain. 2020, 44%. So I mean, 64% the year before. It has monster years. Monster years. I mean, look at these gains. These are incredible. So semiconductors has definitely been hot over the last decade, and it's definitely something to watch. So let's break it down a little bit. I want to show you my concerns. So look at NVIDIA. It's 26% of this fund. Let's look at a chart at NVIDIA. All right, so this is a chart of NVIDIA. So this is lifetime. We're looking at the lifetime of this on the max. It used to sell at dollar, and now it's all the way up to $488 a share. Let's just do a quick gain on that, just so you can kind of get a little perspective on how much this has gone up. So from basically, let's, I can't even get down to a dollar, so we'll just shoot up to here. It is up, you know, almost 10,000%. I mean, that's an amazing gain. But looking at this, this looks really extended. Look at, look at this chart. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. There you go. So now you can see we had this nice pullback and then boom, right to the moon. So NVIDIA is trading at all-time highs, as you can see here. And I'm just going to put this on a, let's put it on a five-year chart just so you can get an idea. Because this right here, I want to show you this. It looks like it's moving over the national average, which is great. So they're saying medium term bullish. But what I see is NVIDIA is struggling to make new highs. Anytime that I'm going to buy an index fund or you know anything like that, I want to look at the main stocks that are the highest portfolio and then make a decision based on that whether I should be buying it right now or I should wait. So I'm going to zoom back out now so you can see. And this is right now the resistance, 505. And you got these thin lines here where there's not as many buyers. So from here, basically 468 up to 505. And now you have from here 490 up to 505. So NVIDIA is trading in this range where it's stuck right now at 488. And it doesn't mean that it's, I'm not saying it's going to stay there. It could break through 500 and go way higher. Who really knows? But when you look at the one-year chart, RSI 55, not terrible. When you look at the five-year chart, RSI is 60 on the 61 on the bottom. When RSI is high, it basically is indicating that the chart can be overbought. And I'm looking at the six-month, it's 49.50, not terrible. But overall, the RSI, even on the short term, five-day is still 58. But that's something to think about. So you're going to start dollar cost averaging into FSELX. This is 26% 26 NVIDIA is. You're going to buy up here. For me, I would rather wait and then maybe start dollar cost averaging either into NVIDIA. If you don't like that much risk and buying just one company, then go for the index fund. But remember, if you're buying FSELX, you are buying NVIDIA because this is 26%. And instead of just buying a video, you got to pay. You got to pay an actual fee just to hold it. Now, just keep that in mind. So, I want to look at the downturn on this. I want to see. Trying to get the drawings up here. Let's see a horizontal line, trend line. There we go. So, 
if we go from, let's say, 500 back down even to here for a retest, and that would be around 400, let's say NVIDIA drops 400%, that's 20% pullback. So I definitely don't recommend, you know, buying into it with all your money. If you're going to buy, I would definitely dollar cost average because if this goes even for the worse, let's say down to 200, you're looking at a 60% loss. You got a dollar cost average into this because right now it's just very, very overbought and it can still go higher, obviously, you know, but just got to be careful. You want to protect your assets, especially if you're going to be uh, buying into this heavily. So I just wanted to show you NVIDIA. Now let's show you TSM because TSM is another one that's worth 5%. And let's see where TSM is. Let's go to the max. And TSM has some room to grow here, which is nice. You can see clearly there is resistance right in this area. Now let me just go to drawings. Let me look at this, the vertical line. You can see right here, there's resistance around the 122. But TSM looks bullish and it, it looks like a nice little chart. And let me just show you real quick. It looks like it's following this, this path right here which you can see and here's your trend line here to draw it so it makes sense so like that's your channel right now as long as it stays in this channel you are a nice bullish ride up which is good but i definitely be careful with tsm if it's going to 92. so my point is you're looking at these stocks you look at fselx how much room do they really have to go can they grow a little more or are they going to start pulling back all right, so it's December 22nd, 2023, the time of this recording. FSELX, I would say be patient. If you want to start buying it, fine, but dollar cost average into it. Don't go all in at once. If you got $1,000 to invest, maybe do 100 bucks here and there. But I would anticipate a pullback. I mean, this is year to date. The fund is up 76%. So I would just be careful. Realize, know what you're getting yourself into. NVIDIA is 26% of this fund. So if NVIDIA, if NVIDIA does well at bad, you know, this fund is in trouble. So keep an eye on these stocks because these top 10 holdings are making up 77% of the portfolio. So in my eyes, I'd rather just buy a little bit of piece in, of NVIDIA, buy a piece of On Semiconductor Corp, buy a little bit of Marvel, buy a little of Taiwan, or pick two or three of them and dollar cost average into them into your portfolio, make them two, 3% of your portfolio, and then, then you can handle your risk. But just buying FSELX alone, you know that you're gonna have, those 10 companies are making up 77% of the portfolio, so why would I pay a fee? I'm just gonna buy the stock individually when I think they're at good prices. So that's what I would recommend. I wouldn't buy this, this um, fund. I would just pay individually and look at the composition of the stocks and just dollar cost average into two or three of them and call it a day. All right, guys, this is my channel, Trading Simplified. If you feel like you learned something, please hit that like, comment, subscribe. Definitely appreciate it. I made a video on SQQQ, so check that out. I've been shorting the market. I got $5,000 invested. You could check out my previous. I'll put it up here so you can see it as well. And maybe you see this video a couple months from now and we'll see how it played out. But anyways, thanks to all my subscribers. And if you feel like you learned something, hit that thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I always appreciate responding back. And I'll see you in the next video.